Yeah, I was yeah. Asked, last, asked to leave school uh, before, before it ended. And, uh, what was the circumstances of being I was, I, I, my, my sister went to the same school as me, and um, the headmaster wasn't very nice. And there was a balcony above the stage, and uh, he was on stage saying, one bad apple in the barrel was spoiled. And I'd done him with the fire extinguisher from the top. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I deserved to be expelled. And I, and I went to drama, drama college for... Uh, for a year. And, and, how, it, and how, what was that like? I mean, did you just... It was weird because not many kids... Uh, see, I'd done a school play, and I, I, the reason I'd done the school play was I fancied one of the girls in the play. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'd done the play, and my mum and dad came to see it, and they thought, oh, he's pretty good, he's all right. And it was another way for them to keep me off the streets, I think. And so they kind of coached me, would you like to go to a college and learn it? And I just thought it was something different to do. And, and I got there, and I was a little bit of a danger for the other kids because of the way I spoke, you know, it was all about elocution at the time and that kind of... And there weren't many kids like me doing, from where I was from anyway, yeah. acting, you know. We had the Michael Caines before us and, and Bob Hoskins was just coming through at the time, you know, before Long Good Friday this was, so... And, and so I was kind of like the new kid on the block, but the college, you was allowed to work while you was there. You were allowed to go and be an extra on films and... And so you, it was a good thing in a way because you kind of learnt how... Because no one te taught you about cameras, you know. You went to drama school to learn about the theatre. Yeah. But you, you kind of work, watch the workings of how films were made and how people go about their business, which interested me. And I felt, because I love film anyway. I used to go, every Wednesday afternoon, my dad would pick me up when he came up and went and take me to the cinema, you know. When 633 Squadron was about and Beckett and, you know, Thomas mm. Beckett. And they were making great films at the time and Cinerama was out, so it was all big and... And it was, uh, it was a special occasion going to the cinema. You know, you had the organ come up and they'd play it. And it was a day out, you had the B movie that was on first. So it was, it was a really good time. And I kind of, I didn't fit in in the drama school, but I was kind of fashionable at the time because they were starting to make things like the Sweeney and, yeah. and all that. And so Cause you, you've just made a, you've made a movie, the Sweeney, but you, yeah. were, but you were in the Sweeney, the my, Sweeney. My first ever job while I was at the drama college was was a, an episode called Loving Arms, and I was an extra. I was a kid who was supposed to be with the main actor who was buying guns, and Dennis Waterman and John Thor were at the bar, and he was in the Red Cow in Hammersmith. And um, I kept talking. I, kept, I was only supposed to be the extra, but I didn't know the rules, and I kept saying, let's have a look at that gun, and they said, no, 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 you're not supposed to say anything. But I didn't realise at the time they'd have to give you another 30 quid if you said something. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's worth so... And so... And at the end of the, the programme, I was supposed to get shot, but I, I actually climbed over the fence and got away, <laughs> which they kept in, funny enough. So I, I, I had no idea how to, how to make films and what it was all about and the rules and the discipline of it all. But, and I got expelled from drama school. Because um, <laughs> uh, you vandalised somebody's car? Yeah, the headmistress was really kind of <laughs> horrible. And it was, it was a, actually, it was a really cruel thing because I, I put tax in a wheel with a car, so she got a puncher. And one of the kids grasped me up, you know, which... And I got asked to leave the premises. And the day I got asked to leave the premises, a lot of my mates at the college, and there were some good kids there, yeah. I'm still mates with, you know, were going up for a film at the BBC. And I said, well, I'll come along with you and we'll have a beer after and we'll say our goodbyes and I'll go off into the big bad world and do what I'm going to do, you know. And um, I started speaking... It was at the uh, White City, you know, BBC, mm. the White City. started talking to the girl behind the counter the receptionist, and she said, why don't you go in and meet the director? And I said, um, no, I don't really want to do that, darling, thank you very much. She said, no, go in, go in, he's a really good guy. And I did, and it was Alan Clark, and it was for Scum. Yeah. And it was, uh, I was the last one in. And um, the part he was seeing me for was written for a Glaswegian, originally. And uh, I'm nowhere near a Glaswegian, so... <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we just, we, we talked... And uh, I thought he was a great man anyway, but um, and I left well, and I, I thought no more about it. But um, I got a job on the way I walked down the corridor. I, walked, I walk on the balls of my feet, that's from boxing. Right. And I guess I got a little roll in the shoulders. I used to, I'm getting older now, I can't be bothered to do it anymore. But, <laughs> but I, I had a little roll in the shoulders. I was, I was just a cocky little kid, I suppose, you know. And uh, So it was nothing to do with any ability. Yeah. But Clarky saw something there and... It was the best thing that ever happened to me in the way that because it was my first job as a, as, a, as a leading actor, if you like. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had a great teacher. Teachers that 
at that time we didn't have we didn't have uh, probably the National Film School. Yeah. We didn't have places you could go. We didn't have the option of someone sitting down and saying, this is how you work with cameras, this is how you work on film. But I did. I had this man. And uh, kind of a thing where I didn't have the background and the, the knowledge of, I don't know, this industry, if you like, that maybe some of the other kids had, wh where it's, it actually done me some damage for a while because I, I learned that honesty, when you play, you've got to feel it and the honesty of playing the truth in a scene. Well, there's certain jobs you do where you don't do it that way. Right. But so I was getting jobs where I was just actually playing the truth. And if it didn't work, it was because it was crap. And, and so I didn't know how to adapt that, you know, and to take that, in, you know, yeah. for different genres and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it took me a long while, probably about, I've been doing it for about 35 years, probably took me about 33 and a half years <laughs> to work it out. <laughs>